Welcome to Quarkus Tips, a series of useful and practical examples you can use with the Quarkus framework. For more information on Quarkus, visit Quarkus.io. Quarkus is a Kubernetes-native Java framework tailored for Graal VM and Hotspot, crafted from best-of-breed Java libraries and standards. The goal of Quarkus is to make Java a leading platform in Kubernetes and serverless environments, while offering developers a unified, reactive, and imperative programming model to optimally address a wide range of distributed application architectures. Let's see it in action by creating and exercising a basic Quarkus app. We'll start by creating a new Quarkus project using its Maven plugin. We'll answer a few basic questions to get the app created. This will create a basic project including a Hello World RESTful endpoint. If you look at the generated pom.xml, you'll see the Quarkus dependencies and a couple of Quarkus extensions being pulled in. Let's build and try out the sample project on the traditional JVM. We'll run it in developer mode and check out the live reload capabilities. Notice how fast it starts up, even in dev mode. Quarkus employs an ahead of time compilation phase, which significantly reduces the time needed to start the application at runtime. So with the application running, we can then access its endpoint using curl. And indeed, it's working. Now let's make a quick change to the Java code, replacing the word hello with hola. As you can see, upon accessing the endpoint again, Quarkus has rebuilt the affected code and responds immediately with the new value. This application can also be packaged as an executable jar, similar to other Java microservice frameworks, but we'll take it a step further and deploy a native binary. Quarkus native binaries are extremely resource efficient, starting up fast and taking up very little memory. This makes it very well suited to many uses where traditional Java apps have struggled, such as serverless or event-driven environments, or applications where process isolation and density are super important, like scalable microservice architectures. Quarkus pre-compiles and packages our app as a native binary, in this case for Mac OS X, as you can see. And we can just run it like any other command. Quarkus starts up extremely fast, thanks to all of the pre-work done during compilation, eliminating dead code and resulting in a very small memory footprint. Let's take a look at the actual memory usage of this running app. We'll use the ps command in a separate window and check out the resident set size, or RSS, of memory for this application. Looks like it's about 11 megabytes of resident memory. Pretty small, and you can start to see how fast startup and low memory means it works great in containerized or serverless environments where resource usage translates to real monetary cost. Next, let's deploy to the cloud with OpenShift. To do that, we'll generate a native Linux binary instead of the Mac OS X binary, since a Linux container will eventually be running our app. This uses the Linux container itself to rebuild the application as a native Linux binary. With our rebuilt Linux binary, we'll go off and create a new project in OpenShift and deploy a container with our native binary. We'll use Minishift and the OC command, which I've installed locally, and after a series of OC commands, we'll be able to access our project in OpenShift. Opening our project in the OpenShift console, you can see our new app running with its single instance. We can also access the sample app's UI using the provided link in the console, and the app's RESTful UI by appending slash hello to the URL, just as before in the local case. Now let's fetch the URL from the Kubernetes route and access it using Siege, a load testing tool that concurrently accesses our app. We'll access it for a few seconds and see what the result is. After our test, we see we're getting about 256 requests per second. So let's scale our small app up so it can take more load. We'll scale it to 10 replicas to start. After scaling, we'll apply our load again, and you can see now we've increased the throughput significantly. We're able to achieve around 1,100 requests per second, quite a bit more than the 256 we got in the past. 10 not enough for you? Let's try 100. Quarkus takes an innovative view on how to deliver more efficient applications, making Java relevant to application architectures previously thought taboo, like serverless. And its extension capability enables the Quarkus community to provide many frameworks that can be natively compiled along with applications. For more Quarkus tips, be sure to subscribe to the Quarkus YouTube channel and get notified of exciting new videos showcasing many of the other Quarkus capabilities designed to solve real-world business and technical problems. Thanks for watching.